Hi everyone, it's Greg. I'm product manager at Datacher and today we're going to be running through a face mask detection model on how you can build it on the Datacher Nexus platform. And before we get started, if you want to jump along on this hands-on session, feel free to sign up for our free tier, which will definitely cover you throughout this project and more. So let's get started. Once we're logged into the Nexus platform, we're going to create a new project. So I'm just going to go ahead and name this project Face Mask Detection, like so. And the type, I'm going to select a object detection, although we do support uh, instant segmentation as well. And next up, the first thing that we want to do is to go to our image tab and to upload all our images. So I've already pre-downloaded the Kaggle dataset, but we'll link, we'll put a link to it in the description, and I'm going to be selecting the entire uh, training folder. So we should have 835 files in this folder, and just wait for a little bit for it to upload, like so. And this should take uh, anywhere from uh, one minute or less. All right, now that's done, uh, you can actually see the thumbnails that have been generated within the data set, just so you have a precursory pre pre glance as to what kind of images are involved here. And the next thing that we want to do is actually to go to our annotations and upload our annotations. So on the data chat platform, we do support a variety of uh, annotation formats, so CSV, um, and for this case, we are going to be using a Pascal uh, VOC uh, dataset. So I'm just going to be selecting all the XML files that I've downloaded from Kaggle. And I'm just going to upload all of them. And this should take um, about a couple of seconds. And yeah, you can see that it is almost done. Great. And once we go back to an overview of our project, we actually get a breakdown of how many images have been labeled and a breakdown distribution of the class of the labels. And within this page, we can actually rename or add any new classes uh, as you wish. And next thing we're going to do is to go to our inbuilt web-based annotator to actually inspect how some of these labels have been annotated as well as annotate the remaining images. So I'm just scrolling through. And instead of scrolling through, you can actually select the filter all images on the bottom right hand corner just to see which images have been, been labeled. Yeah, we have about five of them here. So I'm just going to be using a bonding box to label these images. So just dragging on the face mask. And I'm actually using the hotkeys on my keyboard to toggle between the different classes. Um, that's something that's been feedback to us by a lot of uh, MR teams who, who've been doing their labels on open source images uh, and who've just uh, incorporated the hotkeys uh, function just to aid in the efficiency of the data labeling. Yeah, so just a couple more. Right, and we have our last image here. Awesome, great, that was all the images. And now once we head back to our project overview, we can see that all of the images have been labeled. 
And if we head back to our images tab, we can actually see that the thumbnails of the images have been marked with their respective uh, labels as well. And next up, it's time to build our training pipeline. I'm just going to create a new workflow here. And a best practice that we advocate for all users is to name your workflow according to the parameters that you select, um, just so it's easier to keep track of the experimentations. And I'm just going to name, name mine, uh, say, 2000 uh, epochs with augmentations. OK, the first thing we're going to do is to select our project data set. So this is essentially all the images and labels that we've uploaded. Uh, next up is to select our augmentations, and finally is to select our model architecture. So within the DataTrap platform, we do have a variety of uh, models that we support. So several detection models and one uh, instance segmentation model. For today's use case, I'm going to be using a mobile net. And if you click on each of these building boxes, like the augmentations one, uh, we actually support up to 30 over augmentations. So you saw earlier some positional and some color space augmentations uh, like so. So this is especially useful if you're deploying um, your model uh, for real life um, applications. And on the model architecture, we're just going to be changing up some uh, training parameters like uh, 2000 uh, epochs. I'm going to connect all of these different nodes. And first things first, I want to preview my augmentations. So just take a while to build. And yeah, we can actually see how our augmentations will be applied on our data set. And next thing, I'm just going to be running my training, just confirm with the configuration summary. And on the data platform, we do allow for hardware acceleration for up to four GPUs. I'm just going to be using one for now. And for the checkpoint strategy, we're just going to be using the last checkpoint. And that's it. I'm just going to start my training like so. So we can actually see that the instance is starting to initialize. And as we speak, we get to see the first signs of our model that's being run. So this uh, TensorBot will be generated automatically, and you can actually track the progress of the model training in real time just to spot any early signs of uh, overfitting uh, so you can kill your training earlier, like so. And depending on the size of your data set and number of uh, labels, this might take uh, anywhere from uh, 30 minutes to a couple of hours. And yeah, you can see our training is actually completed. And we get a really nice convergence on the loss uh, function. I'm just going to expand my graph a little bit over here to take a closer look at each of these uh, evaluation um, checkpoints. And just scrolling through to kind of see the different metrics that we get. So things like um, classification loss, uh, average recall, uh, precision, MAP, and all that good stuff. Okay, and next up, what we're going to do is go to our artifacts page. And this is where all the previous trainings will be stored. And I'm just going to be generating a TensorFlow model. Now, once again, this is going to take just a couple of minutes. And we see that I've already generated a TensorFlow model. Now I'm going to be downloading. And next up, I want to be visualizing our plat our model. So I'm just going to be loading in the portal platform. So portal is our open source uh, platform that you can use uh, to visualize how your computer vision models are actually performing when you feed it uh, new images. And the GitHub repository is linked in the description as well, or you can look out for our other video. And first thing first, I'm going to be loading in the model. So you can actually load in the model two ways. I'm going to be loading it in locally, but if you train your model on the Exchange Nexus, you can just enter in the project um, secret or generate a model key. So I'm just going to be naming my model like so, and just uh, inputting the folder path. Great. 
great. Now my model has been registered. The next thing I'm going to be doing is to load it. So you can load multiple uh, models into Portal, just so if you're playing around with various uh, model experiments. And next thing I'm going to be doing is to load in several assets for my model to make predictions on. Yep, we'll be able to view all of our assets that we're using. And we're just going to let our model run on this first image here. So at a 50% confidence threshold, I'm just uh, running through a couple of images just to see how these uh, predictions are being made. Uh, and you can actually adjust the confidence uh, threshold. So just playing around with the different uh, confidence levels and to see how accurate my model actually is. Just a couple more examples. And you can see there are some early signs of uh, model confusion, especially at lower um, confidence thresholds. And this is really a good start for us to really look back at our data set, see how things can be improved. And one interesting thing to note as well is that on Portal, you can run um, inferences on video as well. And within the video settings, you can actually control the frame uh, intervals. Yeah, I'm just playing around with the filter function to see uh, the different uh, mask labels that are generated. Just running through a couple more examples here to spot any early signs of confusion or several um, edge cases. And yeah, there we go. That is essentially training a model on the entire data nexus platform uh, you've seen the entire process from uploading images to labeling um, the data set as well as to configuring the model training pipeline and finally um, validating the computer vision model when feeding it um, new validation images on the portal platform so that is all uh, i'm greg from data and if you're interested in finding out more about the portal platform i'm just gonna link uh, the script. I'm just going to link the portal demonstration video uh, below so you can check that out as well. Um, that's all from me. Uh, look forward to the next video where we cover more industry relevant applications and I look forward to seeing you then. Bye bye.